Good morning, y'all. Welcome back to the kitchen. Let me just tell you, there's all kinds of stuff going on at the Jordan house today. I have beef in the pressure cooker, Cannon, which I showed y'all how I do that already. And Troy is um, smoking a couple of chuck roasts that we'll cut up for sandwich meat for our Christmas Eve sandwiches, chips, and dips. And we'll, we'll slice it real thin and it'll be so good. And I'm fixing to make my first round of Christmas goodies, and I thought I would bring y'all along for what I'm doing. Now, way back when I started, I think I showed y'all these cookies, but I've got a whole bunch of new subscribers since then, and I haven't forgot about the drawing for the $5,000. i am waiting for my prize to come in. I ordered a prize to give away. So it, as soon as it gets in, I will do a video and make an announcement, and we'll... Uh, get our drawing underway. But anyway, I'm going to make what my mother called pecan roll cookies. And you mix your dough up and it's stiff and sometimes you think it's not going to roll into a cylinder, but if you keep working with it, it will. And uh, it's all it is is pecans, butter, sugar, flour, and an egg, and a little bit of vanilla and a pinch of salt. And you roll those cookies up into like each batch makes three logs depending on how big you roll it and you freeze them pull them out and let them thaw enough to slice them slice and bake them and let me just tell you that's one of the best cookies i've ever had in my life everybody loves them and they always want some more everybody wants the recipe it's an old recipe mama made this when i was in elementary school back a long time ago so i'm gonna bring y'all over to the mixer we'll get them mixed up and then you can watch me Rolling them into the cylinders and I'll get them in the freezer when they're frozen. I'll bring them and slice some and bake them and show you what they look like. They're just so, they're similar to a shortbread. They're buttery, they're crisp, they're good dunked in your coffee or tea or just eaten with some milk or just run by and grab you one. So, y'all come on over. I'm going to use the Bosch mixer for this and I'm going to use the cookie paddles on it. And they're just open where the dough goes through it, but it mixes it really, really well. So let's get over to the Bosch today, and uh, it's a workhorse, and we'll mix up. The reason is I'm doubling the batch, okay? So y'all's recipe will be for one batch, but I'm doing a double batch. So y'all can watch me do double time. And besides my canner going, I got some pinto beans cooking to go with some of that meat this evening when it gets done. We got it going on here today. I always try to get all of my ingredients done to start with, and I've already put my two pounds of butter in my uh, bowl. But this is going to take six cups per recipe, so I'm going to need 12 cups. And knowing me and my talking, I was afraid I'd get to talking and forget where I was on my count. So I'm going to measure my flour out in this bowl, and then I'll know, you know, when I've used it all. Obviously, y'all know when I've used it all. There's two. Okay, there's 12. Okay, I'm going to mix my butter up. You have to have it as soft as you can get it without melting it because you have no liquid in this recipe. Well, it would help if I would plug in my mixer. Don't you think? I just wanted to mix it a little bit. Now I'm going to add my sugar. If you're writing down as we go, it's one pound of butter and one pound of brown sugar. And I always use, because Mama did, the light brown. If you prefer the taste of the darker brown, I'm sure it would work just fine. But this is a two pound bag. You know that little bit always sticks up in the top and makes a mess. Okay, let me get this mixed in. Let me put the cover on. Okay. 
Okay, my sugar's mixed in really well. I'm going to go ahead and add my eggs. Your recipe will call for one egg. So, so far we have a pound of butter, a pound of brown sugar, and one egg. Okay, I've got my egg mixed in really well. I'm going to add my vanilla. And I need a couple of teaspoons. Yours will be one teaspoon of vanilla. This vanilla had a cork in the top. Y'all have seen me use it. It's a pretty bottle April bought for me at the Nutcracker Market one year. And my cork broke, so I just put one of those pour spouts on it so I could keep using my pretty bottle because I like it. And pretty. Okay, I'm going to give that a mix. I'm going to scrape it down. Okay, now that I've got everything in, I'm going to, and except at the end, we will add, uh, yours is going to be one cup of chopped very finely pecans. But I'm going to start adding the flour and mixing until I get my 12 cups of flour in. These measuring cups came from Sir Tob when I was working there last year. I picked them up and I love them. For stuff like this, they're handy. Okay, I'm just going to cut the mixer on and let it run until that's mixed really well. And then I'm going to add some more and I'll bring y'all back. I've added some more flour. I've got about two more cups left after this. Alright, I'm going to add in, well I have more than two left I think, that's one more. Okay, we'll get this all mixed in and then we'll add the pecans and we'll be ready to roll our rolls up. in with everything really well. Y'all's will be one cup of finely chopped pecans. Just going to let it mix until it gets those pecans all mixed in and then I'll bring y'all over to the booze block while I roll it into the rolls. Okay, y'all, it's just about mixed, so I'll see you at the booze block. Here we go. I just get me some in my hands. I don't measure, but you want to work it to try to get it to mold together. It's like clay is about what it feels like. But when you start to form your cylinder, see, I'm, I'm forming it in my hands as I go because it'll get... It'll look like it's done, but on the inside there'll be a crack. Let me show you. Well, that one's doing pretty good. So I generally fold it one way and then the other to try to make sure that my inside is as solid as I want it to be. And then you just, you don't punch real hard. You just kind of roll it and keep patting it together to keep the inside the middle. And you can make them as small as you want them. If you wanted little bitty ones, then make little bitty ones. I like to have mine about a two-bite cookie. Especially as much stuff as I'm going to 
have made, nobody's going to want a great big anything. They want a little bit of everything. Okay, so here's what I, when I get them done, I roll them. Now, Mama made hers longer than this, but this is how Gay does it. I'm going to roll them in some saran wrap, and Mama used wax paper. You know why? Because back in the old days, when Abraham Lincoln was here, and I was a kid, my daughter, when she was in kindergarten, wouldn't know if I went to school with Abraham Lincoln. Lordy mercy. Anyhow, we didn't have saran wrap. And wax paper just didn't stay fixed like saran does. We're blessed. Okay, then just twist your ends. And there's one ready to put in the freezer. And then I'll just slice them up. So I'm going to make one more. And then I'll get the rest of them made and bring y'all back. And we'll see how many I end up with. See, it kind of looks like a crumbly mess. You have to work with it. But, but don't give up. And if you do give up, just pat it out in cookies and bake it. They're good like that, but this is so convenient. The other day I had one roll left, <coughs> left in the freezer, and I went and got it out. And we enjoyed a few cookies. It, that way you don't have a whole big old batch that you eat a whole lot more than you need. I guess you don't need one, but... There's another little darling done. So I'm going to get it in the saran and then I'm going to finish what I moved over from the mixer into this bowl. And I'll bring y'all back in a little bit and show you what I've got. Then the next thing is trying to make room in the freezer for them. Okay, y'all, I got eight rolls. Now, they're kind of like when you have triplets or quadruplets or quintuplets. They don't all look just exactly alike, but they all came from the same family. So we're going to get this into the freezer. And uh, when it freezes hard enough that I can slice it, well, I'll take one roll and slice it and bake it and show y'all what they look like. And I can have that little tin continuously filled with these cookies until Christmas, but yet they're fresh because I'll make a few more each time it gets low. That's the beauty of this recipe. It can always be okay, fresh. I gave my cookie sheet. They've been in the freezer and they're firm now. And I gave my cookie sheet a quick spray with some uh, Pam. And I've got my oven heating on about 350 to 375, just somewhere in that range. And you're just going to cook these. And I'm cutting them a little bit thick because that makes them a little bit softer. Just cook them about 15 minutes until they're uh, brown. Now you can have them. Depending on how brown you get them, it's going to be how really crispy they are. I'll show you how we like them. And you see, when you make those logs and you pat them and you make them just really tight and good, you got good little cookies. Isn't that just cool? They don't spread out a whole lot, so you can get a bunch on a cookie sheet, too. I told y'all the first time I made this video, my mama made these one time for a school party. Mama worked, and this was just easy for her to make homemade cookies and put them in the freezer and have them ready to serve. But other mamas made decorated cookies, and I wanted my mama to make pretty cookies. Now, the teachers and the mamas that were there, I can remember they loved these cookies. I don't think the kids ate either kind, actually. We were too interested in getting the present from who drew our name. Back then, we did that. But Mama made these, and they weren't decorated Christmas trees. But now, I know they were the best ones there. Come on, get these in the oven. and will be back in just a minute. And We'll put some on a plate, and I'll put the last tray in, and I'll be done. And then when these are gone, I'll make some fresh ones instead of making a whole huge batch, and I'm getting old before they're eaten. Okay, I've got the first tray out, and they were in for 15 minutes between 350 and 375. And I like them when they're just getting brown around the edges. You'll have one or two that'll get darker, but uh, 
they're just wonderful texture when you get ready to eat them. So I'm going to get them over here on the rack to cool, and then I'll plate some up and show y'all in just a minute. Okay, y'all, this is my first Christmas goodies for 2020, and I'm using my big fat Santa. That's what we call him. My friend, Retha Smith, had a ceramic shop. And 40 years ago, or thereabout, I made that Santa Claus in ceramics. And then I have um, just a Santa Claus tray that fits in Floyd, a little small one, for the cookies. And this little milk jug actually came out of an old barn in Louisiana where the people had a dairy. And I have a whole case of the little milk jugs. They just don't have little stoppers in the top. But I like to use some old and some new and um, accent for Christmas so this is what y'all will be seeing is my Santa and my plates I have a cookie jar that I made over there too that same year so I'll be using it in one or two videos probably so y'all will get to see my old treasures now I know some of y'all probably remember seeing this when I first started my channel but my goodness we've grown we're nearly we're like 5,700 and 80 something subscribers now so um, I got my uh, gift in that I'm going to use one of the things for my drawing so I'm going to wait till probably Saturday or Sunday and tell y'all what we're going to have and let you comment and then one day next week we'll do a drawing for uh, having reached 5,000 subscribers and I'm so excited anyhow um, Hope y'all enjoy the cookie recipe. It sure is easy. And I forgot to tell you, I think I forgot. I toasted my pecans. Now, I did mine in the June oven. You just put them on a tray in there, and the screen pops up and asks you if it's pecans or walnuts. And you touch pecans, and it toasts them perfectly, and then the chimes let you know when they're done. You can do it in a skillet, or you can do it in a regular oven. But it sure makes them taste better when you toast your uh, pecans or walnuts when you're fixing to make a, a cake or cookies or something like that. So now y'all have again one of our very favorite cookies and I love the convenience of having them in the freezer. I can pull them out and by the time the tea or coffee's made I can have a cookie to go with it. Hope y'all will try it. Maybe your mama's made them. Maybe y'all have made them. Let me know what you think about it and if you have a good tried and true cookie recipe that's in your Christmas uh, goodie uh, recipe box well why don't you share it that's what you're supposed to do is share your good recipes y'all be getting some goodies made it ain't long now on Christmas and then we'll get to go into a new year and hopefully a much better year I guess sometimes they say it's what you make it so in the worst of times you can make it the best of times you just have to put forth the effort the good Lord bless y'all, bring you back in a day or two, and we'll have something else good, another Christmas goodie probably.